Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we are previewing a prototype of the Four Horsemen. But before we get going, folks, I am not alone today. I am joined by Alex Hart. Hi, Alex. Hi, welcome to me, I guess, <laughs> you know, I'm ready to go. He's already taken over the show, folks, and I am happy for it. Because here's what we're going to do. This is a little bit different than a regular Rado Runs Through, because I have not played Four Horsemen. I haven't read the rules. I know it's a cool cooperative game about staving off the end of days, but... This man here has spent quite a bit of time playing it, and he fancies himself a bit of a game teacher. I mean, you're about as close to a professional game teacher as there is, right? Well, I, you know, I fancy myself a board game sommelier, so if I can't tell you about this game, then I'm not doing my job right. That's true, and if you find yourself enjoying him, he's got his own YouTube channel. There'll be a link for that down in the show notes where he makes recommendations. But in his day job, amongst other things, you do teach newbies how to play games at Guardian Games right. uh, in Portland, Oregon. Oh, yeah. And he's going to teach us all how to play this game today, folks. Uh, I am just going to sit back, and we are going to be taken on a magical journey of learning and discovery. Now, you might not care about learning how to play the game. You just want to know, hey, should I back this game? Because it's crowdfunding right now. Well, if that's the case, you can go ahead and hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen. Um, right around, right somewhere over there, or follow the links down in the show notes, and you can skip ahead to where we are actually going to do the run-through together as a two-player co-op. But uh, if you would like to know how to play this game uh, with a higher level of fidelity, Alex, take us away. Well, who are we? Where are we? What are we doing? Absolutely. So, in this game, we are playing as heroes from different pantheons. You are playing as Raphael the Healer from the Judeo-Christian pantheon. Okay. I am playing as Hercules the Brute okay. from the Greek pantheon. And we are going to be trying to, like you mentioned, stave off the apocalypse by preventing the four horsemen from making it to the center of the apocalypse board. Right. So, Speaking this, of which, yes. um, this is a big game, folks. It takes up a fair bit of table space. So the four horsemen, um, the titular four horsemen, will be spending most of this run through off camera right up there. But if they ever do make a move, we'll just bring it down so you can see it live in action. Of but course. there they are. Death, famine, war, and pestilence? Disease. Disease. Uh, pestilence is very old-fashioned. It's all about disease these days. <laughs> So, these horsemen are going to be working their way towards the center of the board, and our goal is to keep them from getting there. Okay. And in addition to that, they will also be summoning demons onto the world board that is right here. And so we are going to want to mitigate those demons, keep them from moving, and eventually make it to the final end of the apocalypse mm -hmm. and defeat the scenario that we have listed here. So our scenario right here, we're playing the tutorial scenario. It is called malaise. And so there is a specific event that we will add. It is a six hour scenario. Okay. In this game, they include scenarios that go all the way up to 15 hours. Um, so you've got a lot way, of time. Help me out here. That's six hours in game terms, right? Six Not hours in game terms. terms. Don't okay. worry. So right. this one is definitely a shorter one. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, being at the eleventh hour seems like it would be pretty thematic. Okay. But yes. Yes. The, uh, the sixth hour, we'll take it, right? All right. So that just means we have a little bit more time. So six hour scenario here that is marked by this very lovely time tracker here. On My the gosh, hour folks, board. these miniatures. Uh, they are through the roof amazing. This, in a regular Euro, would just be a little cube or maybe a little disc with an hourglass yeah. on it. But no, it's a little demon carrying a cool little hourglass. Yes. All right. Although you pointed out to me right before we started, because I was like, this doesn't fit at all. And you said, um, the publisher knows this is a prototype, folks. There are going to be some odd little things like, hey, the uh, hourglass is too big for the hourglass track. But don't worry, they'll fix all of that for the real game. That's right. So the hour tracker is getting larger in the final thing here, but back to the scenario, yes. we've got uh, the event that we, we'll talk about in a second, okay. but there's also some sort of effects that will happen in every scenario. So right. for this one, it says that we're only going to use stage one relics. There are also stage two relics included in the box, but because it's only six hours, we're only going to use the stage okay. one. And then the other thing is that at the end of every hour, we will gain a corruption. So right. that will come into play. And then lastly on this card, you see the victory condition. So All the right. victory condition, as you can imagine, is something that we will have to do in order to win the game. So to win this game, you've got to make it to the end of the hour track. Yes. You have to complete the victory condition. And then you have to do this other thing called a binding ritual. Unfortunately, that is not included in this prototype. But the binding ritual is basically some sort of effect 
acts that you will have to complete in the final round. So we will just play this game without that, but it is uh, a new mechanic that's going to be. Added. Okay. Oh, that they are because this game, of course, it's a prototype. It's still in development, so it's kind of like a final boss fight, exactly. kind of finale thing. Right. Okay. So we'll we'll. As I explain the event deck here, you'll you'll kind of see okay. what the binding ritual might be. So if you don't mind, each round we are going to be flipping over a new event. So if you flip over the first one there, you can see that there are three different levels to this event. Okay, so the first level, something will happen. This one says in each zone you spawn a demon. Okay. okay? Then each round, if we do not deal with this event, yeah it will have a second effect. And then if it goes another round, it'll have a third effect, right? And so we want to potentially mitigate some of these things before we have to take on okay. all of the negative things that I happen. now understand this board in that, hey, it does its first thing and its second thing and its third thing exactly. and then it's gone. And so okay. if you put that back on the green screen there, you can okay. see the bottom of it with the X, that is the removal uh, what we have to do. What we have to do to okay. remove it, right? And so this says, oh, one player has to discard for prestige, et cetera, et cetera. There's, right. there's a number of things. Spend that, resources. Yeah, we have to spend resources to get rid of these events. But if you do that, you can do that at any time. And if you do that, that means it will not activate further on. And with more players, there's more we have to do and more bad things. Exactly. Okay. So we're only going to be activating that first column in a two-player game. But with three and four players, we would activate okay. more. Okay, All right. so that is the event. Each of the events will pop up once per hour, and then the final hour, where the binding ritual would, would be, that would essentially be a final event, but you would have to remove that. You have to remove it. Oh, it's not an optional. It's not an optional. Remove, okay, right? gotcha, Because gotcha, these gotcha. ones you could just choose not to remove and take the penalty. Yeah. But in the final, the binding ritual is, is essentially an event okay. that you can you have to remove. Right. But, I mean, those final, they will function like regular events. It's exactly. just, they're a bit tougher. Hey, it's the end of the game. We're like D John McClane at the end of Die Hard. Oh, we can barely make it. And now we have to deal with Hans Gruber. Exactly, okay. exactly. You got it. So, uh, the... The main thing that you're going to have to pay attention to is, you know, like I said, to win, right? You got to complete the victory condition. You got to do uh, do the binding ritual, and you have to make it to the end. Okay. Now, the ways that you can lose mm -hmm. is okay. if one of these one of these amazing minis <laughs> makes it to the center of the apocalypse board, you lose. Folks, these are I'm going to have to call them maxis. Quite frankly, yeah, I mean, these are pretty amazing. fantastic. Yep, yep. So, so if, if any of them make it to the center, if any okay. of them make it to the center of the board, you lose. All right. All right. Another way that you can lose is demons are going to be spawned onto the board here. If at the end of the turn there are ten or more demons in one specific location, then you automatically okay, lose. Okay. 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 So we need to be able to mitigate those demons. And finally, you can lose if both of your heroes become fallen. Okay? okay, so Fallen is this sort of mechanic that will happen here. And so we'll move to the player boards here. We can see we have two cubes at the top of the board. The right. first track, the yellow track there, is Divinity. So these ones actually need to be switched. Oh my. Uh, the yellow track is Divinity. That's how close to God you are or something okay. like that, right? Uh, the bottom track is Corruption, right? And so you are constantly balancing this Divinity and Corruption throughout the game. Okay. Corruption matters, and I'll explain why in a bit. But mm -hmm. you will be gaining corruption probably at a higher rate that you will be than you will be gaining divinity. Okay. If at any point your divinity and your corruption match, you fall. Then you technically count as fallen. All right. Now, if one player falls, it's not a big deal. But if both players fall, then we lose. Okay. Okay. So we have to make sure that between the two of us, both of us, neither or. Both of us are not fallen. Right. So in traditional video game parlance, this is my health meter that can get longer, and this is how much damage I take. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Now, if you are fallen and you would ever gain more corruption or lose more divinity, okay. you don't actually move your trackers. What okay. you do is you choose a horseman to move forward, right. right? Which is objectively worse than this. <laughs> so you want to try to make sure not gotcha. to have that happen. All right. Okay, so that divinity and corruption, right, you can become fallen, which will gotcha. then affect, that is one of the loss conditions. Okay. okay, so now that we've talked about how to win and lose, let's go to our player board and look at some of the things that we have let's going do on that. here. So on your player board, you've got four different stockpiles here. Mm -hmm. uh, this one over here that is contained in the square is a sort of a special resource. This is our spiritual resource. Okay. So something to note about this is you've got spiritual resource that's called faith. I've got a spiritual resource called virtue. That is specific to our pantheon. Oh, okay. So there may be relics in the relic deck that have a column on them. If they have a column on them, then that refers to virtue. If they have a flame on them, that refers to faith. Oh, I see. 
Yep, there's the which column. Which is gotcha. right there. And, and they do not. Mine. They're not interchangeable gotcha. for one another. Okay. So if you get a relic and you want to buy it and it costs you a column, okay. you don't have that resource. It is essentially as if you don't have that resource. Okay. Okay. So. That being said, you can always spend a corruption to get any resource. Ah, okay. So if you're saying, oh, I want to buy this relic and it costs one column, you can instead move your corruption track up to gain that into your deck. The Greek pantheon is not cool with you jumping over to ancient Egypt. <laughs> exactly. Religion. We have to keep things Hey, separate. we don't want to hear about that Horus guy. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So this is a special resource. It has a sun to to identify that it's a spiritual resource, right? And so when it says you can gain any resource with this treasure chest, for example, that does not refer to faith or virtue, okay? That refers to the other three okay, resources okay. here, yeah, yeah, yeah. which are wisdom, zeal, and prestige. Which we both have. Which yeah. we both have and can be interchanged, okay. and both of us can have, okay. okay? So wisdom, zeal, and prestige, in general, in my place of it, what I have found <laughs> is that the wisdom and zeal are more valuable than the prestige okay. is. They each represent different types of followers that you may have in okay. your pantheon, right? But <clears throat> generally, Wisdom and zeal are good at uh, clearing events and buying different relics, and prestige is more kind of like a, a, an every person resource where you can you can get, it's easier to get a lot of it, but you can't use it on as many okay. things. Okay? okay, so just something to note. Okay, so any of these, like you said, it has that that uh, general general on the bottom, which means that if you gain a general resource, you can pick any one of those. Oh, things. okay, okay, all, all right. right. So now. Moving on to the bottom of your board here, you've got four card slots here. Yes. You've got two in boons, you've got one in use, and one in sacrifice. So now I will mention that this is a light deck building game okay. in the sense that you will have a deck of relic cards. Okay. Your relic cards are unique to your hero at the beginning, and then we will be drawing more relics and adding them to our deck to make Do we have any overlap, or do we have completely... There's a, there's a little overlap okay. right. on both of ours. But I have Ambrosia, for example. This is a... Uh, pantheon specific yeah, yeah, for yeah. me, right? So, on these cards, you may want to put it over there on the green screen Woo! for me. So on those cards, you can see there are three different use cases for those cards, right? Boon, use, and sacrifice, which correspond to the spots okay. on the bottom of your board. So, boon is typically the least powerful effect, mm -hmm. but you get to play it and you can often get a lot of resources from right. it. Okay? okay. Use is an effect that will oftentimes either clear demons from the board. For this this one in particular, you're able to clear corruption, which is always nice to have. That's pretty difficult to do. Corruption and, is the skull. Gotcha. Yes, exactly. And the other means that other players get a bonus as okay. well. All right. Okay. So that one is usually a quite good uh, ability, but it also, this can only be one card in the use section. Right? And then finally, right. in the sacrifice section, there also can be only one card. And typically, on every card, the sacrifice is the most powerful option. Sure. But at the end of your turn, you have to sacrifice that one, which means you trash it from your deck and you don't get it back. Right. All the other cards will be discarded and you can use them again. Is this a deck, a, a quasi deck builder, in that I want to trash some cards to make room for other better stuff? Or is my deck full of great stuff already? I would say yes, try to trash your your starting deck early because the okay. relics that you get are, I would say, objectively better okay, than okay. whatever right. you have in here. Okay. But they also will cost resources, which sure, we'll sure, talk sure. about yeah. in a bit. Okay. So once you everyone on your turn will you'll put out all four of these and we can play simultaneously, although in our first play we will do it we have a first player token right here, which is also a pretty fantastic <laughs> mini. This uh, is a first that player is all, marker. All the four all the four horsemen there. Okay. <laughs> but the first player token, this, this will just make sure that we're not overlapping in the things. But once you've played it a few times, you can play the, your turn simultaneously. Right. Well, I mean, even if we were both experts, I think we, for the purposes of filming, exactly. we would do it one at a time. Exactly. So, so we'll do it one yeah. at a time. Okay. But essentially, we'll all put our cards out all at the same time. And then I'll be like, oh, I do the Boons action. Right. And then you can do the Use action or whatever. You don't have to do it in any specific order. And oftentimes, we'll have to choose the order because you may so have some effects that will affect my resources. Oh, okay, well. okay, okay. Okay. So, once we do all of those actions, then... Is that on the turn order event? All right. It is. That's So, we're in the heroic actions. We're talking about, hey, we can perform upkeep. Exactly. We can assign relics to heroes. We can move to new zones. We can resolve relics and deal demon damage. Yeah, so moving to new zones, right. this one will happen uh, at the before you start to resolve your relics. Okay. You can move to one zone. All zones are adjacent to one another. So, okay. you can move to any zone you would like. Okay. But you can only move once, unless you have a card that allows you to okay. move more. Okay, so you can only move once per turn, so make a count. All right? So once we resolve our relics, yes. then if there are any demons oh, and left... Oh, just to be clear, 
I had a hand of cards this round. Mm -hmm. uh, I am putting them in whatever slot I want, Correct. and then I will resolve all of them after I've ap uh, applied them all? Correct. Okay. So yes, you, you will resolve them all, discard the sacrifice one, all the other ones go into your discard, discard. pile, okay. and then we will uh, resolve the demons, right? So if there are any demons left on the space that you're on at the end, of our turn, yes. essentially. Our combined turn. Our combined okay. turn, yes. Then you will take one corruption per demon that is on your space. Right. Oops, let me interrupt there, folks. Alex Mix spoke. It's not that you take one corruption for every demon that you're next to at the end of your turn. It's that you lose one divinity. Kind of the same, but a very important distinction. So let's get back to it. Your space. Right. Okay, That's so what they do. You want to try to clear those as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Or run away. Or Yes, or, <laughs> or run away if you can. Yeah. Okay? So once we've completed this then we'll go into the relic phase so okay. we have a relic deck over here just on yes, the very corner right of the yep, screen yep, there yep, yep. the relic deck is full of different artifacts and things from our different pantheons right so this is including pantheons that aren't in the game there's right some now this here? this is only this is universal this is Judea, judeo christian and greek okay so, so that's part of setup yes exactly okay. so you will you add in the different relics from your pantheon into the relic deck so that but this also makes you know a difference because you may draw a a hellenic or a greek pantheon yes. thing in which case you may have to spend the corruption gotcha gotcha gotcha, gotcha. It, right so we will each draw three relic cards and we have to pick one because we we trashed a card this is the hunting for relics phase. exactly All so right. this the the wording on this part is a little bit outdated because uh, we don't have a reliquary anymore okay but essentially what you do is you, you draw three cards you pick one. Oh, i see so it must have used to be like a public draft or yeah something it was like kind that. of like a draft and they figured thing. let's just speed this up exactly so draw Probably three a good cards call. you pick one you have to pick one though you okay. have to choose one which means you have to have the resources to choose one right oh. so you want to make sure that you've you've built up enough resources to potentially get whatever you're going to get. Okay. Okay. So you have to pick one, but you can pick more than one if you have the resources if I can pay to spend it, right? And, and that's, if I can't pay? If you can't pay, well, again, you can always spend a corruption to get any resources. There you right? go. Right. But you can also do the last thing on your board, which is a divine power. Okay. Ooh. So each of us have six divine powers on our board. All right. Right here and right here. Okay. And these divine powers can do anything. Mine obviously are stronger and can clear a lot of demons because yep. I'm Hercules. Yep, and that's yep, what I yep. do. Yours uh, are varied. They can you can gain faith. You can use faith to gain divinity, which is always a really nice thing. But as you can notice, there are two different columns in these boards, right? Yes. You have a self column and an other column, right? So the okay. self is the bonus that you get, and the other is what all other players get. Okay, it's it's very tiny, but that is self, that is other. Exactly. And I mean... So in the first yeah. one, right here, I can clear a demon and I lose a zeal, but it, I nothing get happens nothing. to you. Nothing happens to you. I just get to watch Hercules smash. Right? But, but for example, for in your laying on of hands here, you can spend two faith and I would get a divinity, right? So you're buffing me. Well, that's very thoughtful of me. Yes, you are the healer after yes. all. Yes. So then, you know, you may also have something over here, which is like embrace the light. You get two of any resource, any general resource. Oh, that's in a the... corruption. Yeah. And the, I gain right. a wisdom for that. Okay. I'm not 100% sure why I gain a wisdom, but I gain a wisdom. I, 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 I share some of my zeal and wisdom with yes, you. Yes, that's obviously. very kind of you. So. Something to note about these powers is you'll note that there is a number in the corner there underneath, with a skull underneath. Yes. That means that this is the threshold of corruption that you need to be at in oh, order to cast these powers. Wow. So you need to incur some corruption oh, in order nice. to get the stronger powers. So yes, at the I beginning see. of the game, these are both those zeros. are zero. So you can cast those two right away. But you and have I'm just to get about to, to fall, three. but that's when I can eliminate mortality. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. So yes, the more corruption you get, the closer you are to falling, but <sighs> also the more powerful you become. I like that. So you have really have to mitigate that throughout the game. So are these just things I can do any time on my turn? Yes, so divine powers, you can do them at any time, and basically what it does is it pauses the action that's happening. Okay. So for example, if a event comes out and it would add a bunch of things to the board that might make us lose, you could potentially clear some things using your powers okay. to, to mitigate those So effects. even though we are playing with this, which means we're being a bit more structured and mm -hmm. taking turns, the reality is this is any time. Yes. Divine okay. powers are any time. The only things that you have to pay attention to is you can't do it in the middle. If I'm doing something in the middle of something... You, you have to finish your Yeah, I have to finish existing. my action. And then you got to do also, all three of these before I could help you with the... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You also have to make sure that you are okay with any negative oh, effects that sure, you sure, may sure. incur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example... Uh, I, I actually don't have a ton that will give you negative effects, 
But, you know, for um, this I one do. right here, yeah, yeah, this one will give me a corruption. Yep, so I'll corrupt I, the you heck have out to you. make sure that I can even take that or that I want to take that. Right, right, right. Because right. I also lose a, lose a zeal for that as well. Yep. So something to pay attention to. You just have to, yeah, we'll yeah. just call it out. Yep, yep, use yep. these divine powers. But these divine powers are powerful and we should use them. In fact, the victory condition for our specific scenario here oh, hey, hey. requires that we use five different divine powers. So this is a little bit unclear whether we just need to use divine powers five times or we need to use five separate divine powers, but I think to make it a little bit more difficult on ourselves, I'm, oh, yeah, we yeah. are going to try to use five different Are we going powers. to put markers on these to indicate yeah, they have so been used? I've got some clear markers here that okay. we can add onto them just to show that you've used it. Okay, right? and so that, I mean, normally you don't have to do that, but because we have this objective yeah. we're tracking, we have to mark that we've done exactly. it. Exactly. Okay, makes and sense. And something to note as well, you can use them as many times as you want. You can use them consecutively if you'd like, as if long I'm, as you have the resources as long as I can them. deal with the exactly so if you had four faith you could give me two divinity and our our thing five divine powers between the two of us no this says all which means that both of us have to okay do gotcha, five gotcha, divine gotcha. Powers. so gotcha. both of us are trying to up our divinity at least or up our corruption at least far enough to get to yeah the those power. mortals need to see something because they're in a malaise exactly gotcha. exactly we know how to bring the goods right so this is obviously a scenario specific victory gotcha. condition but it'll help you know, for the tutorial, it's great because you can see how the divine powers work. Cool, cool, cool. And okay. folks, uh, in the final thoughts, we'll talk more about some of the other scenarios. We'll talk about some of the other characters. I do want to point out, though, uh, these are prototypes. Here is an idea of what the real thing is. Dual mm. layer boards with slots and all mm. that stuff. We're just playing with slightly updated stats and whatnot. Absolutely. And they've also added in already some expansion content that has Norse mythology, Egyptian mythology, and Chinese mythology. Oh, so, cool. very excited to kind of see how That's all very of those cool. play out. Yes. But, for the time being, yes. that is what we're doing. We talked about the relic phase, which is you draw three cards, you pick one, right? You can pick up to as many as you'd like. If you don't like any of the cards or you can't afford any of the cards, you can discard one resource to draw three new cards. Oh, during that during, during that phase. hunting phase. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then the last thing that we do is kind of upkeep. We just advance will, time. Yeah, we'll advance our time to the next hour. We will pass the first player token to the next person. We will make sure we didn't win. Which so a six-hour game means we are going to play six rounds. Six turns. Provided we don't get knocked out early. Exactly. Okay. We have to make it six rounds. 100%. Uh, and we have to complete that objective before time runs out. Absolutely. Okay. And then we will flip new over a new event and start a new round. Right. What is our hand size? So our hand size is five. Okay. There may be cards that allow you to draw more. And when you do that, you'll just put it in this little extra uh, okay. draw space gotcha. here. But uh, typically, your hand size is five. And you can only play four cards on your turn regardless of how big your hand is. Oh. So you... Uh, you'll have to always sacrifice one card and any other cards that you would play would get discarded. Every turn? Every turn. Of, of the five cards I have, I am going to put four of them in yes. these slots. Four of them in your slots and one of them will get trashed every turn. Right. And of the card I did not play, am I carrying that to the next that round? One, no, that one just gets discarded. That one, okay. Yeah. That, yeah into the relic, into discard. The relic discard. Okay. A along and with these. I see we have an upkeep, so apparently there must be some cards that stay around, round, Right. Around. Upkeep is, that is a mechanic that was introduced in the Norse expansion so it won't actually come up because we are not norse we are not norse no, okay. yet okay. not norse yet all right so. all right anything else that is essentially the game like i said there's i guess i'll mention one more thing about the demons so when the demons get summons they start summon on the number one slot here and the further along they get summoned onto these locations they can potentially give us negative effects so okay. if we get if we're or, there or... yeah well if as soon as they cover up one of these slots, so if they were oh, to spawn the seventh demon, yeah. then one of us has to get rid of a faith of yeah. any type, right? So this could be my faith or your faith, right? right? Yeah. Now, your the, virtue is I Yes, my virtue, yes, exactly. Yeah. So the, th the thing to pay attention to on this is all of these locations have different effects that might have negative effects, yes. and those only have to ha this happen to the team at large. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Now there are some wordings in the game that will say, "Oh, this happens to one player," or "This happens to all players," or "This happens to every zone," or things, things like things like that. So you'll you'll need to pay attention to what that is referring to, so yes. that you make sure that we're not giving up too many resources. Okay, right? okay. that is the one tricky thing no, in the game me. that we'll have to watch. Well, you'll have to watch me. Yes, I'll make sure to watch you. And Paula and will watch we, us both. Yeah, Turn on those go. Klingon subtitles, folks. There you go. All right. Cool. Uh, and it's, the, you know, again, 
it was, hey, the, uh, you know, um, this should say events. events yeah. The events, events yeah. uh, come out. That's what spawns demons or whatever the events say mm -hmm. they do. Then we have, we're not doing upkeep right now. We, um, right. So some of these aren't Put here, but the main thing down. is we get our hand, we play our four of our five cards, we get some more cards to deck build a little bit, and then time moves on. That's right. Six times rinse and repeat, and we have stopped the apocalypse. We've stopped the four horsemen. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, by the way, I notice that on these four horsemen spots, yes. it seems like there are events that happen as they move up. Yeah, so as they move up, you'll see that they may cover up a specific thing, and that is, again, that's a team effect. So, Like on the board with yes, the Yes, if this one, for example, will move up, our team has to discard two zeal and two prestige. Communally. Okay. Now, when it says demons, mm. if there's no specific wording around the demons, what we'll do is we will roll this six-sided die and place demons in that zone. Oh, So okay. that will go into zone five right okay so if if there's no specification uh, as to where three, the demon four. goes that's what we'll do okay but general sometimes it'll say each zone gets one or when it says all that means all zones that heroes are in already okay so cool, the, cool, that cool, will cool. spawn in our zone actually yeah i mean this game isn't i i thought it was a bigger table hog than it is it's really our player boards that sure. are big exactly the boards themselves we probably could have rearranged but that's okay i think we have now folks now you and i know how to play this game and Unless there's anything more. That is it. Then, folks, uh, go on ahead and hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen or follow the links down in the show notes, and you can actually watch us fight the four horsemen. Or if you just want to hear my thoughts after having played it for the first time or Alex's thoughts after having played it a bunch, you can go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, a four, a three, a two, a one.